Okay, get it guys. Look, I'm going to go through a couple of things with uh, concrete that have uh, come apparent. So the new plus spec screen, you'll see this. You've got uh, tutorials inside of here. Yet today I'm just going to talk about concrete slabs. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do, you know, two lots of walls. Okay, it'll give you an understanding of why recesses are put in slabs and where they go and how to do it quickly. Okay, so I'm reasonably zoomed out here. I'm just going to do this nice and small, simple little rectangle. Okay, and I'm going to go over here and do a wall that it doesn't create a loop. Okay, it's not even uh, joined up. Okay, so from this one here, you probably all know this by now, walls generate floor face from walls and it created the face underneath here. Now there's something important to understand, is that in a cavity wall, the internal wall is the load bearing wall. And usually your bricks will step down. I haven't put a step down in these bricks because it make it easy to explain. Now the cavity is set inside of the wall and that's not what this tutorial is about. But you can see there I have a 150 millimeter cavity. So seeing this face is selected, I can go to my slab tool and I can click on the slab. And I have two really major options here. Thickness only, if I click this one here. And this is existing or demolition. Look, Basically, existing means that uh, it won't estimate, and demolish means it will estimate and tell you how much you go throw in the bin. Not important at the moment for what we're talking about. So I'm going to go submit. Okay, and you'll notice that the slab only worked off where the face was created from because that's the load bearing wall. Uh, now, obviously, I want to hold these brickwork up, but I also want to have a recess in it. So I can select the slab again, and you can do lots of things with slabs. Okay, so spacebar is your select tool. I'm sure by now all of you know that. I'm going to go back to my slab, and without having to redraw, I'm going to say, well, I don't want it to be thickness only. I actually want to have footings in underneath it and footing depths, and I want to have a recess width. Now, you notice at the moment it's got 160, yet I just measured it at 150. And the recess depth usually works according to the number of bricks, well, in Australia anyway, because your flashing wants to work out to your brick courses. You don't have to have it suit your bricks. You can make your recess to whatever. And I'm going to go Submit. Right, and you'll notice that it now put in a 150 recess. Tape measure from here to here. 150. And also that it was selected as 172 because it's the height of our standard bricks here. However, you're going to have different size bricks. You can change that recess to suit yourself. Okay, I'll just change one wall just so you can quickly see that you can change your recesses to suit yourself. Okay, uh, down the very bottom inside of your wall tool, you'll notice that there is uh, manual overrides, and I can just go in here, external step down 172. All right, and that's why you have a recess. Essentially, the external wall of a building, especially with masonry, it absorbs water and it runs down the cavity, and this is a way to keep your building watertight. Okay, now if I wanted to uh, draw, I'm just going to undo that. And I have noticed people do this, and it's a mistake that sort of could probably be frustrating. If I said, I can draw, instead of drawing my slab from points and using a face, I can actually draw a slab, and I'll draw one outside. Uh, and I can just draw a slab over here. So you would think that I'd just be able to trace around a, an existing slab. But the thing is, is that Plusbeck is thinking that you're drawing from here, and the recess is on top of. Okay, so in the case of over here, if I went to this wall and went walls, generate floor face from walls, it's going to say it doesn't appear to be a loop, so therefore it doesn't know where the last line is. Okay, so if I wanted to draw a concrete slab from here, and I did it the way that I just showed you, it's actually going to come up with an error, and I'll do it very quickly just to, to show you the error. And some people go, well, you know what, all I'll do is change the size of the recess. Well, it's not going to matter because we're not drawing from the place that the recess is, is from. Oops, I actually missed that one there. Go to here. Right, and you can see we've got our recess outside. That's not what we're after. Okay, let me show you how to do this. Rectangle tool, which is R as a shortcut, and I'm just going to go from here to here. Okay. Right, now I've created a, a face underneath here, and you can see that I actually wanted it to come from, from there. Look, no big deal. Uh, I probably didn't line that up exactly as well as I want, wanted to. I actually wanted to go from here, so I'm going to undo it again, and I'm going to go from here and spend a little bit more time doing this a bit better. Okay, right. And if I drew a slab from there, I'll have my recess in the right 
thing. However, you might not have easy access to underneath that, and there's a couple of tricks that you can do with Control Hide just to see what you want to do. Or you can use your scenes at the top here and go Create Scenes, and now all I'm going to have is structure. Therefore, from the structure, I can see, well, this is where I need to create my slab from. So, line. And I'm basically using SketchUp as formwork to create my parametric geometry, and there's probably just one or two more clicks. Ideally, when you're drawing your walls, and if you've been watching the beginner tutorials, ideally you would draw your walls from uh, all your external walls in one go. Okay, submit. If I go back to all, you'll notice that now I have my slab the way I wanted it to be. There is another workaround as well. I'm going to delete that or undo it. Control Z, undo all of that. If I wanted to do the way from the outside, because I simply Uh, I don't have access to the underside, or I don't know, I couldn't be bothered, whatever it is. From here, across to here. Alright, so I've, I've drawn my slab. Now, I've got my face there, which means it's coplanar, or it's all in line, it's on the green and red axes. Uh, I can go offset. So, offset, which is this one here, offset, 150. Enter, and now I have a face on the inside. That face is the distance in from the outside of my cavity. Okay, and now I can go to my slab tool. And, you know, you can adjust the depth of your recess as well. I'll make it so we can make it really obvious. Go on meter, go submit. Right, and now you can see that I have my recess in my slab because I offset the distance of the cavity. Okay, now one other thing with slabs is that you can also put other recesses in it. So I'm just going to delete these walls off the top here. Notice this here, this is, you can see it's like a, the face is looking weird. It's, it's a clashing face. Essentially you can just delete that formwork and it'll go back to your concrete. Right, sometimes you're going to want variable step downs in your slabs. So I'm just going to just deselect that and go delete. Now I might want uh, a, a drop edge beam or something like that and a recess up here for say a lift shaft or something so what I can do is I can click on my slab right click it and go slab and now I have a whole heap of other options so I can go a recess tool, I can add a void uh, I can add penetrations for pipe work uh, I can even create a similar slab so I can use the existing settings from that slab however we're talking about recesses so I can add a recess, I can move a recess, I can edit a recess okay so I'm going to add a recess quickly just do one in here say so we can set the depth of the recess here and at the moment it's going to leave it at 100 millimeters nothing too flash and it's put a recess in it also recessed the bottom of the slab now that's especially important if you're going to do a lift shaft so a lift shaft might have say a two feet or 600 millimeter step down and I can go over here and trace a lift if I had one there and I now have a 600 millimeter step down and if I ran a section through that uh, you'll probably get a better idea of what's happening here Right, you can see that it's stepping the slab down there. Right. Okay. Undo it. Right. I can also put recesses in outside of here. Now, one thing you need to be mindful of: if you've pushed Control Z or moved outside of the tool, slab recess tool, add recess. You need to be mindful to start the tool again. So I'm going to give you an example. So I'm going to go here and say submit, and I want a 100 millimeter recess here. The ground might be sloping or something like that. I'm just sort of messing around here a little bit. Bang, I have a recess. Now I can't recess a recess. So watch what happens if I try and do this. It's just not going to work. Because the, the thing is that we're trying to recess inside of a recess. That's not what we want to do. OK, so uh, something to keep your mind on is that if you, you, you're working on a sloping block you should always start with your deepest recess first so I might say okay well we've got a 500 mil step here in this drop edge beam uh, and I actually push control Z so watch this not going to work because I went control Z and it, basically I cancelled the tool out and the dialog stayed open notice it didn't work there so what happens here I'm just going to go control Z again I'm going to close it right click the slab slab recess tool, add recess, and now I'm going to go back and tell it how deep I want it to be. 500 millimeters submit. Okay, so this might be the lowest point in our sloping block, and I'm going to start at the lowest point and work my way up. Not getting too 
caught up here. Okay, and the next recess that I want to do might be 300 or one foot. Submit. I'm not getting too accurate there, but you can see what's happening. I can have a step down to suit my brickwork so you don't see the side of your concrete. And everything is estimating as I do it. I can associate a price to my concrete. Uh, so by selecting it, I can say, okay, I've got a polyethylene 3 membrane underneath and I can set a price to my concrete, whatever it's going to be. If you want a cubic meters, cubic feet, cubic yards, whatever it's going to be. And a price for my membrane underneath it, I might say it's $5 a square meter because I'm working in metric and they might charge me $2 a square meter to fit it. So even update my prices. This just says it's going to save the next time that I draw a concrete slab. Right, I can now do a bill of quantity, so I can do a takeoff. It's going to ask me to put in a job address. But guys, there's a couple of videos that you really want to look uh, that actually show us how to do this. So um, using plus spec. Okay, let's not get too carried away here. Go submit. Okay, and I'm going to do a takeoff. Right, and here's my concrete uh, that's come out here, and here's the price that's associated with it. Okay, now uh, there's a couple other things you can do with concrete as well. You can you can go to your slab tool, and I can actually move. Uh, so I'm going to move my recess. Right, I'm going to move this one. You can type in a measurement, 600, and you can move your recesses individually. I can move. Obviously, if you move this one here, it's not going to work. And let's have a look what happens. Right, you kind of weird it out. It's because you shouldn't move a three-way recess off its axes. Okay, so keep your mind out uh, and look at things because basically for it to for it to do a bill of quantities it needs to be watertight. Uh, so all the edges need to be joined together. Um, any missing faces, so if I did this and deleted this face, it'll no longer give us an estimate because it doesn't know that there's a cubic capacity. Right, so control Z have undone it. Okay, so in summary, essentially what we do when we're drawing a slab, we're working from the load bearing point, and this is the load bearing point on that. Obviously, if you had a single wall, uh, and I changed all of these here back to a single wall, uh, you can go to the balls of parametrics, so obviously you can change them to whatever wall type that you want to. Alright, go to here, and I want to use just a, a single masonry or uh, external cladding with plasterboard, and go submit. Right, now if I create a wall from this, uh, walls generate floor face from walls, concrete slab. I can still have a recess. Actually, sometimes it will happen because you can see that the external cladding has a thickness. I can go in here and say, well, I only want the thickness to be the thickness of my, uh, my concrete. So I might say I want it to be, I don't know, I'm taking a guess that it's 20 millimeters and I want it to come down say 100 millimeters go submit All right now I can actually have my cladding overlap and therefore to stop any leaks when building uh, I won't get into that right now alright guys look, I hope it helps out uh, and explaining a little bit more about why recesses work and so on uh, and uh, by all means uh, give some feedback at the bottom cheers